SIC is the basic version of the system software. Um, here it is having two types. One is standard uh, version and another one is um, uh, extension of the system software. Uh, that is called as SIC XC. There are two. One is SIC, other one is SIC XC. So uh, I'll just brief out what are yeah. the components were there in the SIC machine. First is memory. Memory is 2 to the power of 15 bytes. That is around something uh, 16 GB. Then um, a three consecutive word, uh, word bytes, which forms the word. So byte is one eight bits. It is made it as a one byte. Next, uh, the mnemonics are there. I mean, uh, the register. There are five registers were there. A, X, L, P, C, W, S, W. A stands for accumulator. X stands for index register. L stands for uh, uh, link register, linkage register. P, C stands for program counter. S, W stands for um, status word. Next, uh, the data formats. The data formats is like uh, how integers is stored and how the character is stored, how the negative number is stored, how the floating point number is stored. All these are about um, data formats. This one we discussed yesterday in detail. Mm. Then instruction format. You can see the mouse pointer instruction format. So it is 24 bit in that 8 bit is for upcode, 1 bit for um, addressing mode that is X. And then uh, for storing the address, it is 15 bytes, is, uh, 16 bits are taken for this. Next, addressing mode, there are two types, direct and indexed. Whereas X is equal, when it, this X is equal to zero, then direct addressing mode. When um, uh, X is equal to one, then indirect addressing mode. Is it clear? Okay. Next, instruction sets. Uh, we have some instruction sets like uh, load and store. Right, right. Uh, load is like a read operation. Store is like a write operation. Um, next, LDA, LDX, HTA, HTX uh, instructions are there. Next, integer arithmetic operations are add, sub, mul, and uh, division. Next, comparison operator. This is like a logical operator. Compare. When we have any compare operator, after this, if we have any something like a compare A or a compare X, then value of the compare X, X is compared with the value of the registered A. Then if both are equal, it returns one. Got it? Next instruction, under the instruction set, it is having conditional jump instructions like a JLT, JEQ, JGT stands for jump less than jump equal to zero like a jump less than listen here jlt stands for jump less than zero jeq stands for jump equal to zero jgt stands for jump when value is greater than zero got it next so these all instructions we are going to use it in the problem solving like a, a program examples i will i'm going to explain in the uh, in under five minutes. So subroutine linkage, J sub R sub I explained yesterday. Mm. This input and output we have not yet discussed. What is this input and what is this output? We all know input is always taken from the input device, like a keyboard, that whatever input is taken will be stored into the memory. Whereas output is going to display the uh, data which is stored in the memory into the output device. And the standard output device is a uh, monitor. So uh, here you can see this TD. TD is an instruction used to test the device, used to test the device. So what kind of device, either it may be a input device or it may be an output device. So TD is going to check whether the device is ready to send the data or receive the data. Got it? So in this TD, there are two types, read data and write data. For this SIC programming example, we have to discuss five different programming examples. Okay, so these things we will understand today. Got it? The first one is, simple data movement operation. 
like uh, move operation or load operation, these things. Arithmetic operation, here we use uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication. Next third one, looping and indexing. Okay, uh, in the third one, looping and indexing, here we are understanding the array concept and uh, looping concept like uh, while loop, for loop, no, those things will be uh, developed using assembly level language. Next up, input and output. Here we are going to understand uh, the test device, TD device will be used. It is going to check whether uh, uh, input device is ready or not or output device is ready or not. Next last one is subroutine. In this subroutine call, we'll use J sub and R sub. We will discuss each one of them one by one. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, uh, let me use another screen. Uh, another, the PDF is more comfortable because that is my handwritten uh, notes. Uh, see, first example. Now, I hope everyone are... Uh, you can see this now see sic instruction for data movement operation okay see here what happened uh, the major uh, first point what you have to remember is there should be no memory to memory movement operation there is no memory to memory movement operation what is the meaning of this for example if we have uh, one second for example move r1 comma r2 this is allowed because there's a transfer takes place from one second hmm. move r1 comma r2 there is a, a transfer of the data from R1 to R2. This is registered to the register operation. This is allowed. Next, move A comma R1. Here, A is called as a memory location. R1 is a register. So, this is allowed. Like me memory to uh, register uh, transfer operation. This is also okay. Allowed. Move register r1 comma uh, b here b is a memory location or else instead of b uh, blp something okay or else uh, loop hmm. see here instead of loop i'll use uh, str see str is a memory location from the r1 it is going to store into the r1 uh, str so this is also allowed but whereas move str comma uh, clp something see str is one of the memory location it is having some value clp is having some it is also one of the memory location there is no not allowed this is not allowed got it see always the mem uh, one second Uh, during uh, the memory operation, there is no memory to memory operation. Okay, this is what I am going to explain. No memory to memory movement operation. Clear? Next, the program uh, will be like this. It is. It should be having three columns. Okay, three columns. Um, the first column is for label. Uh, first column is about label. Uh, here you can see alpha five car to c1 next second column is about the mnemonics here i have lda sda ldch stch okay so this is about mnemonics and next third column is about the variable okay uh, here what operation we are uh, doing here uh, just a simple movement operation what we are doing here we are taking the value which is stored in the memory location 5 okay see here 5 the memory location 5 which is defined here see this the 5 is a memory location uh, he, this is having a value 5 and here i used to called as a 5 word word stands for 
one word constant that means for the five five is a memory location for this five memory location uh, one word memory is assigned so this is having a value actual value is five next we have used alpha in the second uh, line this alpha is also stored somewhere in the memory location for this alpha uh, either you can st uh, allocate word for this or resw resw stands for a reserve word reserve one word if you mention one here the one word is assigned reserved to the memory location alpha okay in the same way see here char2 this char2 is used in the third line okay now for this char2 one byte see one byte of data is stored see here one byte constant got it um, its name is c okay and then uh, what is this c uh, uh, one second uh, don't get confused here this is char2 the, the, for that char2 is a memory location allotted with a byte and there is a character called as uh, 2 the character 2 is stored inside the char2 okay na? so this is mentioned as c uh, single quotes uh, 2 okay and then next is c1 c1 is also one of the um, memory location for that one reserve one byte is reserved resb i hope you understand resw means reserve reserve word word nothing but like a constant it cannot be changed see here when we mention word it is constant like um, if i mention uh, five word five that means only one word will be assigned when i mention byte only one byte is assigned but whereas when i use resw that means i can reserve as many number as possible like um, i can many if i mention 10 means for this alpha 10 bytes 10 words will be assigned see here resb resb is also like assembler directive here i can um, reserve one byte okay now one i can reserve one byte of information to this c1 so if i mention 10 then 10 can be stored okay now 10 bytes can be stored uh, now i'll come back to the program see look at the program line by line i hope you guys see this this is the program LDA5. What is this 5? Five? 5 is having a value 5, actual number 5. This number 5 is this number 5 is going to load it into an accumulator. Okay. By default, if we don't if we mention only one variable, then that automatically the basic uh, register is accumulated accumulator in that accumulator the um, value will be stored next that is load accumulator next sta this stands for store accumulator store the accumulator value into alpha got it store the accumulator value into alpha what happened here now from the value 5 data is stored into alpha see this operation takes place in this way from the memory location 5 the data is stored into alpha correct huh? value 5 is stored into alpha from uh, i hope you understand next load ch see in the third line and fourth line what is there from the char2 load the character 2 into the register a okay now and then stch store the character into the memory location c1 what is this c1 c1 is a reserve byte okay now i hope you guys understand this so this can be written all this particular program is also written as like this instead of using instead of using a see here here we used a instead of a we can represent x see ldx okay now 5 is stored into x a index register and store the index register value into alpha here uh, ldl so this is like a this is like a linkage register 5 value stored into the linkage register and stl into alpha there are three registers we use 
okay either you can use lda ldx or ldl to load the data to store the data we can use sta stx and stl okay so now you all uh, see this um okay see the see this program for for a minute Okay, I hope you guys see this. This is very simple example. SIC instruction for data movement operation. That means I explained this SIC programming example here. I explained data movement operation. Clear? Next. Next is arithmetic operation. This arithmetic operation. Okay, let me explain from this itself. Um, Okay, see this example. Here what happened? SIC programming example. See, obviously, a program can have three columns. First column is about uh, labels. Second column is about mnemonics. And third column is about variable. Okay, these are the variables which are used See here, these are the variables which are used like uh, ALPH, uh, INCR, uh, 1, Beta, Gamma, INCR, 1, Delta. These are all memory locations. Okay. These memory locations are defined in the, are, are stored somewhere in the memory location. Okay. So uh, here one in the last but with one line that one for that what is allocated one word of data one word of memory is allocated next for alpha beta gamma and delta reserve words the word is reserved for it okay now and then we have used one more memory location called as INCR is used for like an increment INCR okay now say this INCR for this also the uh, word is reserved okay what we are going to do we are going to perform the operation like beta is equal to alpha plus INCR minus one like sub Um, uh, now, you see this, see here what happened, uh, first we are performing alpha value, we store the alpha value into A, register A, for that register A value, we add INCR value and then the value again is stored in uh, the same A only and then from that value we did at 1 that means he performed subtraction of 1 this is the operation I hope you guys uh, see this I'll just bold it out um, okay now I hope you guys can see this now see beta is equal to alpha plus INCR minus 1 in the same way, delta is equal to gamma plus INCR minus 1. 
okay how we do this see first alpha value need to be stored into a register a like accumulator register register a lda alpha okay na next the direct, directly we perform add incr when we perform add incr to which uh, data to which register incr is added to the alpha e uh, sorry, for the a content like accumulator content increment incr will be added then sub 1 that is sub stands for subtract 1 subtract 1 to what from the accumulator content only got it so alpha value added to incr from that uh, accumulator value perform subtract 1 and then this particular value need to be stored into beta for that see here sta store accumulator value into beta so store in beta got it next if it is cleared then we'll go for delta is equal to um, gamma plus incr minus 1 see here what happened here now store the gamma value into accumulator okay that means sorry load the gamma value into accumulator next to accumulator value add one to the accumulator value perform minus one and then store the accumulator value into delta got it see this now. take five minutes just note down Okay, shall we move to the next example? Um, the next example is about looping and indexing. Shall I go for the explanation? I hope you guys uh, understand the previous one, arithmetic operation. Next is arithmetic operation. Okay. See, uh, sorry, not, not arithmetic operation. Next is looping operation. In this looping operation, what happens? Okay, um, we all know what is loop. The set of instructions exec uh, executed again and again. Okay, next indexing stands for like an array. For the array, we use i as an index generally in the C programming. In the same way, indexing is used to move the pointer from one element to another element inside the array or memory location. Got it? Hmm. Next, here we perform the loop. Loop, uh, for, for, to perform the loop, we must require a label. 
Okay, see the label is required. Here what label we used, we use move CH. See here what we perform, we perform the string one, string one is having 11 byte, 11 byte string. See here, test string. This particular test string is stored in string one. That string should be stored into string two. That means copy the element from one uh, from the string one to string two. Okay, now uh, see here. So when we are performing this, automatically eleven number will be stored into uh, will be reserved to the string two. Okay, now and then for this we require index register. So to in order to maintain this index register, we make this uh, zero. Uh, like uh, for, uh, for the uh, index register, load x value should be zero. So uh, okay, then eleven. Uh, I will explain why this is required. Okay. Um, next, one second. Let me show you with uh, this one. This my handwritten notes. Ah, see this. What we are going to perform? We have to perform the program to copy. 11 byte character from the string 1 to the another string 2. Okay, what we have to perform? We have to perform the index register to 0. Like initialize index register for loop for i is equal to 0 and also j is equal to 0. Okay, j is equal to 0. S1 of i is not equal to null character i plus plus. Then ca character of the string 1 is stored into characters inside the S2. That means 1 by 1. As in when i is incremented, j values also need to be incremented in S2 string 2. Okay, no? And then finally, once the for loop is over, then S2 value should be end with a null character okay now so we are performing the copy operation of the string that i will explain from the ppt now initialize index register to zero so index register is ldx zero is initialized next what happened load ch see what is this load ch the ch load the character from string 1 into register A. That means str1, string 1 in that 0th place, that is x, x is an index. Okay, now that first element, that means the index 0th element is loaded and then the same will be stored into string 2 in the x location. Okay, now that means one line, one particular uh, character is stored. Once this is done, then what happened? Tix. What is this TIX? This perform the compare, comparing the index register with the 11. What is there in the 11? 11 is having the value 11. Okay, now what it performs? It is going to compare. See, add 1 to the index register and perform the compare result to 11. Okay, next. If after comparison, First, it, if it will increment the x value and then compare with the 11. So, JLT, jump less than. So, jump less than means as of now, x value is 1. 1 is less than, I mean, so if it is less than, then JLT moves CH when the value 1 is less than 11. So, again, go back to move CH. So, now x value become incremented. That means it is pointing to the second string. That second string e of the string one is stored, second character of the string one is stored into, uh, loaded into the, load, load the character and then the same character will be stored into string two. Okay, now again, x value is incremented. So earlier it was become one, now it becomes two. Okay, now two is still less than uh, 11. So it is less than, so again go back to move CH. So it is keep um, moving the string 1 value into uh, string 2, character from string 1 to string 2. Once 
the value become 11. When both 11 and 11 is matching, then it should come out of the loop. What happened? Jump less than. No, it does not take place. Why? Because x value is equal to 11. x value is equal to uh, 11. So that time it will come out of the loop and start the further operation. Got it? I hope you guys are understanding this looping and indexing operation. Clear? All of you see this. Okay, let me Okay, guys, as of now, we understood data movement operation, arithmetic operation, and looping operation. I think still time is there. I will go for this input and output also. What happened with the input and output? I'll explain now. Oh, one more example is there in the looping. Okay, I think I had to go for this. Then only I can go for the input and output. Um, Okay, as of now, uh, we'll wind up the class. As of now, I'm going to share this document to you in the group. Um, if there is any doubts, uh, please get back to me. Okay, guys, I hope you guys enjoy the session. So today we're done with data movement, arithmetic operation, looping operation. Uh, tomorrow we'll discuss one more example of the looping operation and then input and output and then we'll go for subroutine call. Okay, thank you. Thanks to everyone. 
So shall we wind up the session because this is uh, having a time limit till 40 minutes. Okay, pa. Thank you all. Take care. You're welcome. Be safe in the home. Don't go outside the uh, home. You should be uh, make self quarantine inside the home. Be careful. Take care, guys. Wish you all the best. Thank you, sir.